Howdy doodly y'all, it's Colin and welcome back to the tie-dyed iguana. In today's video, we're going to be learning all about the different types of betas we offer here in the store. So when we talk about um, betas and identifying betas, there's typically two categories that we talk about. So the first category we talk about is the finage or the fin type. And the second category or the second descriptor we typically use is for the coloration. So here at Tiny Iguana, we typically carry um, a decent variety of different finage types. And when I talk about finage, it's gonna be basically the actual, what the fins look like on the fish. So I have some examples to show you here. So typically here at the Tiny Iguana, we will carry crown tails. So also called a crown. So these are the, the long strand like um, hair-like fingers on the fin appendages. We'll carry the deltas. That's a more traditional um, classic beta as well. We'll carry uh, the double, or sometimes this will be called the uh, double half moon, if, there's, if it's a half moon. Or the twin tail, they'll also be called the dumbo. So the dumbo um, refers to its pectoral fin, or AKA like the, uh, the little arm fins. On the dumbo, the pectoral fins are really large and exaggerated. There's also something called a super dumbo where the fins are really, really exaggerated. We have the feather. We don't typically uh, have feathers, but we have had them in on occasion. The half moon, that's a very classic beta finish. Super simple, but very clean overall. The half sun is a combination of the crown tail and the half moon. We don't often have those, but they are out there. The placat or the placket, as it's called, this is very close and similar to what a wild type beta splendens finage um, looks like. So this is short and tight fins, basically. We have the rose. This is another one where it's a very long, fl uh, fancy finage. The spade, um, if you notice on the back fin um, here, it's a spade, just like on a card. If you invert it, kind of, it looks like the spade in a card deck. So that's where it gets that name. The super delta, very common. We carry that one quite frequently. And then the veil are also called just the plain veil tail. So that's just a very common type of finish. This is the most common, very long flowing fins. And I can show you some examples of these different fin types. So just to show you guys an example here, we're still talking about finage. Keep in mind, in overall fin shape, ignore the color. So this is what we call a veil, or a, uh, AKA a veil tail. Um, this is the most common uh, type of beta finage you will see in the pet trade. This is AKA like the classic beta. As you see, very simple here. This one is just very nice, clean looking animal. But yes, that very simple, this is a veil tail. Here we have another classic example of one of the most popular fin types. For those of you who already didn't guess it at home, this of course is the crown tail. These guys almost look like a comb uh, has been taken through their fins and like scraped through. They have these very long, sharp strand-like fins. If you look here, it's turning for us real nice. But again, this is a crown tail, very long, drawn out finage. It was those little thin wisps. Okay, our next type here, this is what we call the round tail. So this is very similar to the placket, um, but as you notice, things are a little bit sucked in. And if you look at the rear fin there, it's perfectly rounded. Um, not quite like this spade, it's literally curved off, does not come to a point. But again, fins are very tight, close to the body. This is a very um, athletic, speedy looking fish. So this is the round tail beta. Our next candidate, this is the Super Delta Beta. And it's easy to tell on this guy, if you look at the rear fins, um, this flares out between 120 and 160 degrees. So if you look at the, basically the angle at which the rear fin is set, very easy to tell the Super Delta from some of your other uh, fin types. So this is Super Delta. All right, so next we will talk about beta coloration. So there's different um, pigments in the beta that affect coloration. Um, in different ways. So for example, uh, you'll notice that there's many different types of beta that some have like metallic overlays or different colorations and pigments, especially when it comes to yellows, um, like silvers and things like that. But just to give you a basic rundown of the very uh, frequently carried betas we sell in store here. So um, typically we have in the past carried an alien beta. So the alien beta, what it is, it's actually a hybrid of a beta splendens, which is the captive, uh, very commonly kept beta with uh, it's a double cross of two wild type betas. Aliens are very characteristic, typically for having green or blue metallic colorations. Um, they also tend to be a little bit smaller um, than uh, their uh, wild counterparts, um, than both parents basically. They tend to be a little bit on the smaller side. Some alien betas have been known to be kept communally as well, um, but it just depends um, on the individual fish. The next one we have here is the black orchid. The black orchid is very uh, common here at the Tata de Guana. We get these in quite frequently. Um, these are characterized by a very um, dark, solid, black matte finish. Um, oftentimes you'll see these as well with a crown tail finish. That's a very popular beta. 
the butterflies. Um, we have uh, butterflies in occasionally in the store. The butterflies basically characterized with any color um, where the outside exterior finish goes from clear to almost transparent. So a butterfly can be found um, in addition to a variety of colors. The next two, uh, the next three types, we don't frequently carry, but they do exist in the hobby and are sometimes available. So there's the Cambodian, there's the copper. So these are available in multiple colors, but multiple metallic hues, except this is a pure, um, or a predominantly beta splendens. And then we have the Dalmatian. Um, Dalmatians we occasionally carry in. Dragon and dragon scale. So dragon and dragon scale, typically uh, these are very stout betas, um, in my experience from what I've seen. Um, and most of the time these feature um, darker hues, um, typically red elements with some metallics. The color of a dragon um, or a dragon scale will vary. For example, I've also seen these in yellows and blues and things like that. But there's typically um, like a white or an opaque overlay to these as well. Dumbo ear, we talked about that. These can really be any colors. So you can breed that into pretty much any different color. I've seen all kinds of different um, things. So for example, like we talked about earlier with the Dumbos, you can have a Dumbo half moon, you can have all kinds of stuff. The full mass dragon, very similar to the regular dragon. Typically these are on um, plaquettes, but uh, these are gonna have predominantly single colored body with colored finish. We have the grizzled. We also have the hellboy. Hellboy is very common. We typically carry different types of hellboys. Most often they're frequently found in red or black shades. Um, it's where they get that name from. Marbled. I have a marbled to show you guys here in the store here, I think. But the marbled's two or more colors that spread in patches throughout the body. So then we have the metallic. So uh, the metallic has, tends to have, uh, we talked about those different pigments the betas have. These tend to have those yellow reflective chromatophores or those different pigments in the, uh, the flesh that causes that iridescence. Metallics pop up occasionally. Uh, Monster mask, now this is a type uh, I've never personally seen here, but like I said, they are in the hobby. These have a full coloration body and then the head is a separate full solid color. Um, those are kind of a unique uh, fish. Mustard gas, this is one of our most popular betas here. They're noted for their obvious um, yellow to orangish finish, depending on quality, and the body or the flesh color can be anywhere from a blue to a green. We have the Nemo, uh, the Nemo can, we're getting into the Nemos now, I should say. So the Nemos uh, are a, a newer morph. The Nemo candy is a black and orange uh, stripe with fin edges and metallic scales. We have the Nemo Galaxy. If you look at the Galaxy here, the patterning gets a little bit more elaborate, especially with this uh, sprinkling of blue pigmentation across the body. One of our classic favorites here at the Tide of Iguana is the Koi Nemo. So the Koi Nemo tends to be a mixture of red, orange, black, and white, um, like kind of like a koi fish. The Platinum is an all white, um, ice white beta. Very popular, can come in a wide variety of finishes. And then my personal favorite, the Samurai. Samurais are typically black pigment with silver or metallic white overlays. Typically these are also um, found in the placket um, fin type. We'll go ahead and take a look at the different types we currently have around the store. Okay, so our first contestant here. So this is a combination of two different types. So first off, we didn't talk about this earlier, but this is also what is called a giant beta. So giant betas are betas as an adult where they get a body length from segment to segment or straight length as they call it um, of about two and a half inches or larger. So you notice he's quite a bit bigger than some of the other betas we've seen today. The second thing is if you take a look at his coloration, uh, we of course know that by what we learned earlier, he is of course a koi. So if you look here, he is a darker koi. Um, he's got predominantly black um, you know, chromatophores, but we're seeing those ye uh, red, yellows, and whites mixed in as well. So this guy is a little bit on the darker side for a koi, but this is a giant koi beta. All right, so our next beta here. So we have another koi. This is also a round tail. If you look at the back fin, it's got that rounded shape on the finish. And if you look car carefully or closely, you'll also see that sprinkling of silverish blue pigment. This is also a combination of what we call galaxy. So uh, this is a round tail koi galaxy beta. So this is where things get really tricky and especially to the untrained eye or the uninitiated, differentiating between the different types can be super duper confusing. This guy's a great example of that. So this is technically a koi. He's got that reddish yellow pigment to the body and we have that very characteristic ko uh, koi coloration, although he is very dilute. Technically as well, this would almost be considered a butterfly, but due to the red pigmentation in the outer finish uh, and the fact that it's non-transparent, this would not be considered a butterfly. So this is actually a koi. This is just more of a, what we would call a dilute koi. All right, this is our next beta. So this is, of course, we know as the uh, half moon, or the, I'm sorry, the uh, mustard gas. This also happens to be a half moon, but this is the mustard gas. 
bluish green um, chest and body, and then we have this either gold or yellowish finage on the outside. Now this is a young one, it's not very large. Some of the mustard gases can be a lot more exaggerated here. Like if you look at our photo up here, the mustard gas, that's an example that's really quite exaggerated. Um, but this guy as he ages, most likely um, being a male, his plumage will come a little bit more into color. And he'll get develop more of that classic mustard gas coloration. If you have any questions about betas or you're interested in finding the perfect beta for your situation, be sure to stop in store or drop us a message online. Thanks and have an awesome day.